Hey, what's going on, elect of the Lord? Don't y'all worry about that noise in the background. I'll kill it in a minute. I apologize for the noise. Uh, we're going to just throw some things in the pot today, see what we come up with. You know, the world call it pot luck. We don't believe in luck. But uh, we do believe in the pot. You know, we can just throw it in there, see what the Lord prepares for us here. Okay, uh, let's start with uh, Song of Solomon 2.4. Let's start there. Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse 4. Uh, Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse 4. It says, He brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. Okay. He brought me to the banqueting house. That's the Lord's table. Okay. And his banner over me was love. Because we got to remember that it is written in the heavens. Or in the scriptures. The scriptures is the heavens. Right. So you learned something already. We're not even two minutes in this video. The scriptures is the heavens. Uh, Jeremiah 31 and 3. Jeremiah 31 and 3. In fact, let's start with verse 1. Let's start with verse 1. At the same time, he said the Lord, Will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus said the Lord, The people which were left of the sword found grace that's what we want find grace in his sight in the wilderness you want to find grace in this wilderness right right that's the way he said he would make in the wilderness for us he made a way for us to, to get grace even Israel when I went to cause him to rest we supposed to rest he made a way for us to rest right Jesus said come unto me and I will give you rest. In Matthew uh, chapter 11, verse 28 through 31. Come unto Jesus and get rest. The Lord had appeared of old unto me. Right? Saying, yea, I had loved thee with an everlasting love. His banner over us is love, y'all. This is an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness... Have I drawn thee? With loving kindness have I drawn thee. His banner over us is love. Right? Never ending. Never ending love. Let's get, let's go to the New Testament and get one. So uh, we can kill the gang sayers who are trying to say, well, all those scriptures came from the Old Testament, brother. So let's go to the New and, uh, John 13 verse 1 John 13 verse 1 now before the feast of the Passover when Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the father having loved look his own which were in the world he loved them unto the end now we just read in Jeremiah 31 He's the God of all the families of Israel. And he has loved us with an everlasting love. So that's what we're reading right now. So that's never changed. That's why he said, I'm not only, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 15, 24. To bring us this love, this everlasting love. Right? That has no end. This love he has for his people has no end. End. Okay, now let's take a quantum leap. Let's go to uh, 2 Samuel 13 and keep that all in mind. It'll come back. Uh, 2 Samuel 13, verse 1. Okay, 
And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Oh, he loved her. Keep that in mind. Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. For she was a virgin. Keep that in mind. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Okay. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Sh Shemiah, David's brother. The family member. This is a family member, y'all. David's brother. Right? So this was David's nephew. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. He was sneaky, like the devil. That's what he's saying. He, he, he's subtle. Because they said that about the serpent in Genesis 3 was a subtle creature. Okay. And he said unto him, Why art thou being the king's son, lean from day to day? Why are you sad from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar. He's still using that word love, y'all. He said, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. You know, they've had d different children from different women. You know, sometimes that can be a problem, you know. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick. Okay. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it at her hand. So Amnon laid down and made himself sick. He took the advice of uh, his cousin. The family member, you know, we got family members like this. Y'all know we all got some, fam some sick old family members. Some of them are cool, some of them ain't. Right? So David took the advice of his, his cousin here and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto him, said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down, and she took flour and kneeled it, and made cakes in his sight, and baked the cakes, and she took a pan and poured them out before him. But he refused to eat, and Amnon said, Have out all men from me. He put all the, everybody out the crib, and they went out every man from him. He wanted to make sure he do this with no witnesses. And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber that I may eat at thy hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon her brother. And when she had brought them to him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done. In Israel, don't do this sin, don't do this thing, man. Do not thou this folly, and I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? Where, where will I go? What I'm going to do if you do this? Think about me. You know, don't be selfish. Think about me. Think about... You know, the pain you're going to put on me. The shame you're going to put up on me. And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. She gave him heads up warning, man. You're going to look like a fool if you do this. The scriptures itself gives us heads up warning. Tells us 
if we obey the Lord, we're going to get rewarded. If we disobey God, we're going to get punished. So the scriptures gives us heads up. Just like she's giving him heads up. Now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king. For he would not withhold me from thee. She told him the right way to do this. Do it the right way, not the wrong way. Okay. How be it he would not hearken unto her. He wouldn't do the right way. But being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. He raped her. He raped his sister. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. So that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise and be gone. He kicked her out. He raped her and kicked her out. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou hast did unto me, than the rape. You're going to just banish or kick me out after you done took my virginity. She said, That's a greater evil. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servants that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me. Put her out. And bolt the door after and locked the door. Okay. Put her out and then he locked the door. And this goes on. Now this sin that Amnon did cost him his life. We're not going to read all of that. But that sin, just remember, I want you to keep in mind, what he did cost him his life. That sin of rape cost that man his life. And did you catch something else? How he got love and lust was twisted. He was confused with love and lust. And I want to say all of us are like that in the flesh. Because... When I, we, we don't know love because we saw God God loves us with everlasting love. Jeremiah 31, 3, the everlasting love. We saw in Song of Solomon 2, 4, his banner over us is love. But see, God is pure. What's wrong with you and me is we are tainted with corruption. So we call right wrong and wrong right, light darkness, darkness light. We're weak towards evil. We're more inclined to do the evil, take the evil advice as Amnon did from his cousin. Even when he heard the right way to do it from the source, from Tamar. She told him the right way to do it, but the lust was so strong in him, so powerful, it was greater that she said this thing you did, rape was sending me away was greater than the rape you did. So that lust was greater than, than the love. Now, take that back to uh, Adam and Eve. He did this. Adam did the same thing. This is what I'm showing you. We all are like this. The Bible is showing us that we are all confused. We are all corrupted with this lust. And we call it love. We call lust love. Every one of us. And remember, we cannot see until we see God's love, which his banner over us is love. Right? And that's it is written. That, that's unchangeable. Now let's go to uh uh Isaiah twenty six ten real quick. Isaiah twenty six ten. This gonna make sense as we go. If it's not making sense to you now, just bear with me. We got to throw some more stuff in the pot, man. Isaiah 26.10. It says, Let favor be showed to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. Because yeah, Amnon had favor. This was the king's... Think about this. He was the king's son. He could have... Well, I mean, he got access... I mean, he is the king's son. Think about that, y'all. 
He's got access to all things through the king. All he need to do is make his request. Like she told him. Tamar said, tell the king about this. He would not withhold me from thee. But he didn't want to do it the right way. That's how we are in the flesh. We don't want to do the right way. We don't want to do the right thing. Now, let's go to verse 9. Isaiah 26, uh, uh, verse 9 and 10. With my soul I have desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For thy judgments are in the earth. The inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. This is what the Lord desires of us. To learn righteousness. Which is, you see, uh, Amnon didn't have righteousness. He didn't have no desire to do the right thing. Because the flesh is weak. That's what the Bible is telling us. Our flesh is weak. Nothing good dwelleth in our flesh. But check out verse 10. Let favor... And Amnon was in a position of favor. The king's son, think about that. Let favor be showed to the wicked. And he was wicked. And you and me are the king's son. Sons and daughters. And, and we are wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness... In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. Amnon didn't behold the majesty of his daddy, of his father, the power of his daddy. He didn't consider uh, the shame that he would cause towards his, his father and his father's household. He ain't even considered. That's what this is saying. When we are wicked, we don't consider the evil we are doing towards Jesus Christ and his household. That means your brothers and your sisters, you are wrong in your brothers and your sisters when you don't know the Lord's righteousness, as it says in verse 9. When you don't know his righteousness, that's why the new covenant tells us, uh, let's get that marked. 10. No, Mark 12. My fault. Mark 12, 29. That's why we have these instructions. And Jesus answered him, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel. He's talking to the whole house. The Lord our God is one Lord. He's telling us, Get some understanding. We got one God, one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. This is righteousness. This is his righteousness right here. And with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no other commandment greater than thee. Okay? But remember, we, we being the wicked, we being the wicked, Will not behold the majesty of the Lord in the in the land of the Lord. In the land of uprightness, it said. Which is the land of the Lord. Right? So we're confused. We're confused between love and lust. Y'all got that? Because we don't know the Lord. The problem is we don't know the Lord. That's why he says... Take my yoke upon you. Look, let's get that real quick. I gotta go there. I gotta go there. Matt, what is that? Matthew eleven twenty eight. Matthew eleven twenty eight. I mean, because you're gonna stay confused until you do this. These are instructions. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. Yeah. Also, honor and favor, you know, salvation, mercy, grace, all this comes with coming to the Lord. Come unto me, all that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Learn of my love. 
Learn of my righteousness. Learn of my goodness. Learn of my ways. Learn of my thoughts. Learn of my heart's desires. Learn what I hate. You know? Learn what I condemn. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay? And uh, that pl that's plain. That says it all. Now let's go to uh, Jeremiah. Stay with me. Like I said, it's going to make sense as we go. I'm still adding to the pot. Jeremiah, what we want? 50 and 4. Jeremiah 50 and 4. In those days and in that time, said the Lord, the children of Israel shall come and they of the children of Judah together going weeping and they shall go and seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way of Zion with their faces toward saying toward Zion saying come let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant yeah, I like that word covenant that they shall not be forgotten my people have been a lost sheep their shepherds have caused them to go astray the leaders they have turned them away on the mountains they have gone from mountain to hill they have forgotten their resting places that's what the Lord the Lord just showed us in Matthew 11 that he's the resting place he said come to me I will give you rest so the Lord himself is our resting place remember his banner over us is love the everlasting love all that found them have devoured them see without him we we're devoured we we have no shepherd no protection all that have found all that found them have devoured them and their adver adversaries our adversaries said we offend not because they have sinned against the Lord they know that sin leaves us unprotected our sin leaves us without a refuge the habitation of justice even the Lord the hope of their fathers which connects us to our birthright the Lord our fathers now having said all that let's take another quantum leap let's take another quantum leap let's go to uh, John 19 28 John 19 28 then we're gonna tie it together John 19 28 and then we're gonna tie it together y'all everything we did John 19 28 after this Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished that the scriptures might be fulfilled said I thirst let's read that one more time after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, you know, his work of redemption, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. He said, I thirst. All right. All right. Jesus said, I thirst. King Suman, why you go there? Why you showing us that? I'm going to show you in just a second. I thirst. Now let's go to uh, 2 Samuel 23, 13. Because that's really the... 2 Samuel, what I say? 23 and uh, 13. I'm going to show you why I went there. Because <clears throat> that's, that's the bridge. What I just said right there, that's the bridge. Okay. Second, uh, verse 13. Second Samuel 23, verse 13. And three of the thirty chief went down and came to David in the harvest time. Okay, it's time to gather. That's the harvest time. Unto the cave of Adalom. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephraim. 
And David was then in the hold. Okay. And the garrisons of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. Okay. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me a drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. David was thirsty for the, the water up from the well of Bethlehem, you know, which is by the gate. Right? David was thirsty. Just like we just read what Jesus said, I thirst. I thirst. This ties into the love. Wait a minute. Don't don't y'all kill the video yet. This ties into that love. His banner over us is love. Wait a minute. Verse 16. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water. They went into the enemy's camp to get this water. The enemy had uh possession of this well and they had garrisons they had strongholds around this well but these three men loved David their king so much that really they laying down their life is what they're doing they laying down their life to go get water for David from the well of Bethlehem and the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, check this out. He would not drink thereof, but poured it unto the Lord. He poured it out to the ground, y'all. He wouldn't drink it. And he said, be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. And the Bible said these were the mightiest. They had mighty men. Men that would fight giants and, and defeat all a whole army by themselves. But there was these three here. The, the David calls these these three here had no greater love. You could label them with there was no greater love among David than these three men right here. That's what this whole chapter is telling us. Who laid down their life just to get David some water. Now watch this. Stay with me. See, I know y'all saying I ain't making sense. But watch this. Matthew 26 and 26. Y'all ain't going to be saying that in just a minute. Matthew 26, 26. Uh, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for remission of sins. Verse 29. But I say unto you, here it is, I will not drink henceforth of the fr this fruit of the vine until that day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So he refused to drink it until he said, I drink it new with you. In my father's kingdom. So he wanted to drink it when we in a new place, in a new ground, in the land of uprightness. That's the yo uh Isaiah twenty six ten that we read. As we behold his majesty and learn righteousness, right? Uh in the land of the Lord, that's where he will drink with us. Not until then. So we got to a sin. We got. Let me give you another example. Throw something else in the pot. John. And then we're going to bring it. Then we're going to bring it. John. 20. And 17. 
John 20 and 17. And Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. This is when Jesus resurrected from the dead. When he rose from the dead, he said unto Mary, Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not ascended, not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren, those are Israelites, and say unto them, I ascend unto there's that word ascend again. See, so we got to ascend into the land of righteousness. We have to ascend up into Zion. We have to ascend into the holy place. I ascend unto my father. We got to ascend up into our father as Jesus did. And your father and my God and your God. That's what he would drink with us, sup with us and we with him. As we ascend. Right? Yeah, with me so far. Yeah, with me so far. Now let's go to uh uh because that blood is precious. David didn't drink it because it was he saw them they did a a, a special thing that was precious. Well Jesus just showed us that blood, that cup was precious to him. Uh let's go another place. Psalm 72, 14. Psalm 72, 14. Just to show you what I just said. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence. And precious shall their blood be in his sight. That's that cup. Drinking that cup, laying down your life. Because he thirsts. And David was a type of Jesus that's thirst. David was a type of Jesus. When we look at David in the Old Testament, he was a picture of Jesus Christ. A four picture. Jesus Christ on the cross said he thirsts. Y'all getting this? You're probably not. Okay, let me give you another scripture that is going to make it even clearer. Here's the thirst. Uh, John 7 and what is it 36 John 7 36 what manner of saying is this that he said ye shall seek me and shall not find me and where I am there ye cannot come verse 30 said in that last day that great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst there's that thirst. Let him come unto me and drink. That's where we're going to find our rest. Take that knowledge of him and all of that, right? We're going to find rest unto our souls, right? He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, this is the Holy Ghost, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. But now he's glorified. He gives us the spirit. Right? Uh, he gives us the spirit. Uh, to quench our thirst. And that spirit. We already know. That's the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. That's to know him. Right? That's to serve him that's the land uh, of plenty milk and honey that's the land of milk and honey all the above y'all know that y'all know the scriptures and uh only those that okay let's give you another picture uh i'm trying to think of that verse i was Let's go to uh let's go to uh that's the spirit of, of, of holiness, man. Y'all know that. I'm missing something. I think I'm missing something. Uh 
Now let's go. Uh. Now let's go to uh. Trying to find it, y'all. Give me a second. Uh, that's, you know. Well. Second Peter. Let's go to Second Peter. Second Peter. One four. Second Peter one four. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This is the only way we're gonna escape is putting on the divine nature. The holiness of God, man. We got to put on the holiness of God. That's the divine nature. Okay. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world. Through lust. All of us got lust. Can you, can you not say we all have lust? You can argue a lot of things. But I think that's one you got to uh, bow down to. And admit you got that. You possess lust. Right? And the Bible tells us the root of lust is corruption. That's why it says even husbands got to lay down their their lives for their wife. That means take your cross. He's got to take his cross. He's got to crucify the lust that's in his, his members, man. Let's get that in Galatians. Galatians. I'm saying that because a lot of people don't know this. Five... 24 Galatians 5 24 and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust see that you got to take the cross otherwise you you am not you think you love but it's it's only lust love is the sacrifice love is the sacrifice for God who who Who's testing us? You being tested. You choosing the earthly, the creation over the creator. You doing what Adam did. He chose Eve over God because he didn't have the love of God in him. Adam chose Eve over his God because Adam did not have the love of God. And you heard me. You remember God's banner over us is love. Right? First John three. Y'all know where I'm going. Y'all know where I'm going. First John three sixteen. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives. There it is. For the brother. Right? But whosoever had this world's good, if you got the Holy Ghost, that's what this is saying. Watch this. Whosoever had this world's good, the Holy Ghost, and see if his brother have need, you know your brother need the Holy Ghost. You know your sister need the Holy Ghost. And shut up, up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in you? If you ain't giving them Jesus, how dwell the love of God in you? If you're not giving your brother, your sister Jesus. You shutting up your bowels of compassion from him or from her. How dwelleth the Holy Ghost in you? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue... But indeed and in truth, you got to show your love towards them. 
And everybody we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and know of all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and had love one to another as he gave us commandment. He, he that he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given unto us the spirit of, uh, of love right let's go to Matthew again Matthew 10 watch this Matthew 10 41 he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man, Jesus Christ, right, shall receive a righteous man's reward. The righteous man reward is his God. When Jesus ascended, he said, I'm ascending to where? To my father. That's his reward. And to your father. That's your reward. If you do, if you ascend, Watch verse 42, though. Here's that tie back that y'all thought I forgot about. Let's tie it all together. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water. And Jesus said he thirsts. Your brother and your sister are thirsty. Only in the name of a disciple. If you Jesus' disciple, are you giving them drink? cup of cold water. Remember he said he thirsts on the cross? Brother, I say to you, you shall in no wise lose your reward. Do I need to read that again? You receive a righteous man reward. Jesus Christ's reward is the Father. He ascended to the Father. You and me supposed to ascend to the Father. Remember, no man come unto the Father but by me, Jesus said. Ain't that our whole goal? Ain't that what we want? The presence of God? Well, you got to receive this righteous man, Jesus Christ, and you get his reward. I ain't done. I'm going to show y'all what I'm talking about even clearer. Let's get, let's get it clearer. John, John 17, 22. Let's make it clearer. Make it clearer, King Soup, man. Words ain't read. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Remember the number one sin is falling short of the glory of God. And uh, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now here's the reward. Glory. Jesus' glory. He that receive a righteous man in the name of Jesus Christ, the righteous man, shall receive a righteous man reward. And this is his reward. And the glory which thou gavest me, see, Jesus got the reward of, of glory. I have given them. He gives it to us. That they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me. That they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me. Are you letting them know? The people know that God sent Jesus? And has loved them as thou hast loved me? Are you letting the people know Jesus loved them as he loved you? Is the Spirit of God in you? Is his love in you? Is the Holy Ghost in you? Are you laying down your life for the brethren? Are you giving them a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus Christ? Father, are you just giving them the cup? Are you passing the cup to them? Remember Jesus didn't drink it? He let us drink it though. He said, I'm going to drink it new with you as my father is your reward. That's what he's saying. As my father becomes your reward, I'm going to drink it with you then when you can see me as the father. Are you giving them this cup? Are you passing through the enemy's gate like David's mighty men who laid down their life? There was none greater than these three. 
of David's mighty men. That's greater love. They lay down their life. Greater love had no man in this. And he, they lay down his life for his friend. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory. Or are you falling short of this? His glory is his love over us. This banner over us is love. Which thou hast given me. For thou hast loved. Thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. There it is. O righteous Father, the world had not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. Or you feed in them. Or you feed in his sheep, his flocks. And I have declared unto them thy name. Jesus, that's glorified, that's exalted, that we bow down to. And I will declare it, and the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. And we read, how dwelleth the love of God in you? If you shut up your heart, and you see your brother and sister had need, they have need of Jesus because they're hungry and they're thirsty. And you not feeding them. How dwells the love of God in you? Huh? But you living toward the, with the lust of men. Because you ain't sacrificed the lust. 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2. You ain't sacrificed the lust. And then we read in Galatians 5, 24. They that of Christ has have crucified the affections and the lust of the flesh. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, mind of Jesus, let this mind be in you which is in Christ Jesus, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men like Amnon, but to the will of God, learn God's righteousness. Learn God's righteousness or else you're living by lust. And you're deceived and confused, just as Amnon was. I can't tell you how many times. you got to fight through that and overcome lust. By crucifying, by taking up your cross with Jesus Christ. That's your uh, Psalms 55, 50 and 5. Psalms uh, 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant. That's a covenant. With me by sacrifice. Crucifying the flesh with its affections and lust. You living in Adam, old creation. That's got to be destroyed. That's your first Corinthians fifteen twenty two. All in Adam shall die. Fifteen twenty two. Let's get that. For as in Adam all die. That's old creation. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. New creation. Eternal life. Uh, and Genesis said we shall return to the dust. Let's get that Genesis 3. Right? Uh, Genesis 3, 19. And the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return to the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art and dust Thou shalt return. You got to return to the dust, right? Dust thou, thou, thou shalt return. Let's get that in the New Testament. Uh, which one we want first? Uh, uh, Luke. Let's get the one in Luke. We're going to get it. We're going to find Luke. Uh, uh, Twenty-three. 46, is that what we want? Let's get that first. Luke 23, 46. And when Jesus cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. He's on the cross right here. On the cross is where you give the Father your spirit. 
That's that cross like that's salvation. And having said thus, gave up the ghost. He put his spirit in the Father's hand. Uh, Into thy hands I commend my spirit. Let's read that again. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Keep that in mind. Having said that, he gave up the ghost. That's Luke 23, 46. Let's go to Psalms 31, 5. Psalms 31, 5. Into thy hand I commit my spirit, for thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. That's what redemption is. Into thy hand I commit. That's what Jesus said. This was a forward picture of Jesus. I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. On the cross. That was uh, Psalms. Let's go to Psalms 22. It was written of him that uh, he would do this. Psalms 22. What we want? Verse 14. Yeah, that's it. Psalm 22, 14. I forgot this. Uh, do we want? Yeah. Psalm twenty-two, fourteen. This is him dying on the cross. I am poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted 